Hey everybody, how's it going? Today, let's take a detailed look at the 2013 Fiat 500 Abarth Cabrio. And this is going to be a detailed, in-depth review of the Abarth. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip, and go over the performance data, as well as show you a bunch of the unique aspects of the interior, as well as exterior. And before we begin, I'd like to give a big shout out and special thanks to Fiat of the Triad, located in Greensboro, North Carolina, for allowing me to come out and film the 2013 Fiat 500 Abarth Cabrio. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up, let her run. The exterior color is Bianco, with a two-tone narrow and also leather interior with the unique Abarth Sport high back leather bucket seats. What a glorious sound. The Abarth features speed proportional electric assist rack and pinion power steering and a unique three-spoke full leather wrapped steering wheel, thick rimmed with heavy grips up top, color accent red stitching coming across the top and the bottom, as well as a flat bottom race inspired feel. Dark metallic silver accenting coming across each spoke with some perforations down below, as well as across the sides with comfortable thumb rests, and the unique Abarth medallion staring you front and center. As far as the gearbox, standard and only transmission is a five-speed manual. Nice and smooth, easy to reach, all the way over, down for reverse. All accent in a leather knob and leather boot with satin silver on top and red color accenting. And so we're going to flip on the headlamps, fog lamps, as well as the hazards. Both the windows are automatic down only. And we're going to check out the exterior, shall we? Before we begin, we'll go ahead and put the top down. It's one touch automatic. It'll slide back to a point and then stop. If you want to go down all the way again, just hit the button and it'll continue to fold the back glass. Top down. One touch automatic. It'll slide back to a point and stop. If you want to go down all the way again, just hit the button and it'll continue to fold the back glass. Even though the recently introduced Fiat 500 for 2012 marked the Italian automaker's triumphant return stateside, the latest Cinquecento, or 500 in Italian, has been sold in Europe since 2007, and shares a bespoke chassis with the popular European Ford Ka hatchback. The 500, for its small, nimble, zippy nature, has also been wildly popular. In fact, it just surpassed a million units sold worldwide last year. What it brings is a unique dose of Italian flavor, the wide variety of colors, interior options, and customizability. While a great little affordable urban runabout, there isn't much for performance in the standard cars. Just as the Mini Cooper S, one of the 500 Abarth's closest competitors did with John Cooper Works, Fiat turns to their Abarth division to ramp up performance in the standard cars. Born on November 15, 1908, racing legend Carl Abarth has always believed in designing what he called small but wicked cars. The Scorpion logo, derived from the astrological Scorpio, which Abarth was born under, would become a symbol synonymous for performance, speed, and driver exhilaration. 
Aside from his illustrious race and history, he's also well known for his automotive tuning starting back in the 1950s. In 1949, he formed his own company that specialized in aftermarket performance accessories, especially for the Cinquecento. Being able to turn a mild-mannered urban runabout into a lightweight, track-ready performer by giving it a sport-tuned suspension, bigger wheels, and a more aggressive profile. His automotive tuning and racing continued through the 60s, working with many high-end race teams like Ferrari and Maserati before merging his company with Fiat Group in 1970. He then continued living his dream until he passed away in 1979 at the age of 71. His legacy of wild performance lives on today in the newest 500 and 500 Cabrio. What really stands out for the Abart is the benefit of forced induction provided by a Honeywell turbocharger and twin intercoolers mounted in the lower portions of the wider fascia. With consistent boost pressure of 18 pounds per square inch, the turbo races horsepower by 59 to 160 horsepower compared to the standard car's 101 horsepower. That's a 58% gain with 115 horsepower per liter. Not bad for a car that weighs nearly as light as a feather. The body has also gotten a makeover with larger, more pronounced front and rear fascias and side skirts, designed to help aid cooling the larger brakes, directing more air into the intercoolers and better aerodynamics. The Abarth tuned electronic stability control system has three modes depending on how much control you want to have. You can turn it on, partially off or off corresponding to how much influence the vehicle has over the stability system. There's also a sport mode that does more than just increase throttle sensitivity. In normal mode, the car only utilizes about 150 pound-feet of torque until you get into the higher gears, then you get the full 170. Sport allows the full 170 in each gear as well as increase the steering firmness. The springs are stiffer by 33% in front and 12% in the rear with Coney dual valve dampers that replace the standard twin tube units. The 500 Cabrio, as you can see, still has the functional solid pillars from the front to the rear, which helps keep better torsional stiffness than removing the pillars. Aiding in stiffness are reinforced pillars as well as extra chassis bracing. The top can be opened at various positions like I showed. The initial opening can be used at speeds up to 60 miles an hour, while to fold down the entire roof you may have to be traveling below 50 miles an hour. The radio antenna was moved to being embedded in the windshield, while the rear seat passengers actually get a 1.3 inch increase in headroom. Overall, the Abarth doesn't make any big structural changes aside from a beefed up front cross member, 10% quicker electric assist steering, added 22mm anti-roll bars, replacing the stamped steel front control arms of the cast iron units, and stiffening the twist beam rear axle by 40%. Ride height decreased by 0.6 inches, and the front wheels are set up with 1.5 degrees more of negative camber for cornering grip. Rather than implementing a costly limited slip differential, Fiat uses what they call torque transfer control. It's a lighter, more cost-effective solution that doesn't increase torque steer, and works by individually controlling the Abarth's front brakes to redirect torque through its open differential. The Abarth comes standard with 16-inch alloys, but this one here has the optional upgraded gloss white finished 17 by 7 inch aluminum alloys with red brake calipers. They're wrapped in all-season Pirelli P0 narrow tires measuring 205-40 at each corner. Brakes are also larger 11.1 inch vented steel discs up front and 9.4 inch solid discs in the rear with single piston sliding calipers. It could all bring the Abarth to a stop from 60 miles an hour and around 123 feet. As far as the suspension, it features an independent McPherson strut up front and a semi-independent twist beam rear axle. All with coil springs, anti-roll bars, and the Kony dual valve frequency selective dampers. Length is 144.4 inches with a width of 64.1 inches and a height of 58.7 inches. Total curb weight is around 2,500 pounds depending on how equipped, and if you opt for the Cabrio, it's about 33 pounds more than the standard car. And we're going to pop the hood. The 500 Abarth is powered by a 1.4 liter single overhead cam multi-air 16 valve turbocharged 4 cylinder with variable intake and valve timing with an iron block and aluminum heads. It features a compression ratio of 9.8 to 1 and a 6500 RPM redline. Peak horsepower is 160 at 5500 RPM and 170 pound-feet of torque at 2500 RPM. This translates to 0 to 60 times of 7.1 seconds, top speed of 129 miles an hour, and quarter mile times of 15.3 seconds at 88.8 .8 miles per hour. As far as fuel economy with a 10.5 gallon tank on recommended premium fuel, expect a range of around 28 city and 34 on the highway. The interior of the standard 500 is highly customizable with a variety of colors, two-tone schemes, and colored leather seats. The Abarth being more performance-focused is limited to blacks and reds for the most part. 
Keeping in mind that the standard 500 does start out as an economy car, the Abarth does step it up a bit with a leather steering wheel, leather shift knob, and the optional one-piece leather racing buckets. There's also a few smaller the touches of padded material like the red accents on the portions of the doors. Your power windows are located on the door, while your locks and windows are located on the center console. The standard seating material for the Abarth is cloth, but for an additional cost you can offer these full leather wrapped racing inspired buckets. They feature a modest amount of lateral grip down below and up top, and a nice attention to detail with color accent bands coming up across the middle and the two-toned color scheme. With fixed headrest and integrated hole in the middle accented in silver, it looks like something you would insert racing harnesses into. They're also fully manual with manual height adjustment for the driver's seat, integrated side airbags, 500 logos embedded into the aluminum door sill plaques, logoed floor mats, aluminum sport pedals, as well as a standard driver knee airbag. The steering wheel is manual tilt telescoping with your electronic stability control located on the bottom portion of the dash. The speedometer cluster is padded with red accent stitching, and the white portion across the dash can also be had in a couple different colors. And we're going to put the top back up. It'll also stop periodically, right there like before. And then right there if you just want it open like a little sunroof, and then you gotta hold it for the rest of the way. So let's get and see if she sounds. Probably one of the most menacing turbo four cylinder exhaust I've ever heard. It's just amazing that a car straight from the factory will come with this potent of a note. and shut her up. The 500 comes standard with an AM FM in dash CD player with Sirius satellite radio as standard. Also, at an additional cost, you can also opt for the more premium Beats audio group for a more true surround sound feeling. Side curtain airbags, of course, your visors, also a manually dimming view view mirror, and at the top stack, your microphone via your hands free Bluetooth telephone, interior illumination, and reading lamps. As far as the radio, it's pretty simple to use overall. Your song, as well as station information, volume, muting the system, your presets located down below, as well as changing between the different radio modes. Your different media options include your CD, iPod, auxiliary integration, as well as USB input system menu off to the far right with your radio data for the satellite system, as well as personalizable options. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell for the radio. Your sport mode, hazards, as well as rear defrost, and your simple to use electronic automatic climate control with your fan speed off to the right, temperature to the left, down below your one touch automatic, AC and recycling, heated seats, fog lamps, and off to the far right you have your different zones and front defrost. Your power windows and gear selector are accented in chrome rings, luminous storage down below with cup holders and a 12 volt power outlet. As you come across the back, a leather stitched e-brake, 
center armrest for the driver's seat, two cup holders for the back, and your reclining adjustment in the middle. As far as the steering wheel, to the right is your cruise control, and to the left is your hands-free telephone and voice commands. Say a command. Help. The available commands are message reader, pairing, settings, media player, or exit. Exit. Your radio controls as in typical Chrysler Group Fastener are located on the back, your intermittent wipers, driver information controls to the right, and a unique speedometer cluster with your speed readout up top, tachometer down below, as well as the driver info system in the center. Turbo boost gauge to the left as well as an LED gear shift indicator to let you know when the proper RPMs are to shift. Going through the different options of the driver information system, you have vehicle diagnostics, your hill start system, as well as some personalizable options. Alrighty. To the left, like I said, is your electronic stability control, and we'll go ahead and shut the vehicle off. To gain access to the back seat, all you have to do is pull on these little red straps, and that'll unlock it. It's folded, you just grab it, and slide. Same for the passenger seat. And it is a modest back seat for a little bit shorter individuals. And we'll climb on in and check it out a little bit more in depth on the other side. So let's check out the rest of the vehicle, shall we? Now, cargo space in the Cabrio is a little bit smaller than the hatchback counterpart. It's 9.5 cubic feet in the regular car and 5.4 cubic feet for this car with the rear seats folded up. If you have some taller items, you can fold down the rear seats and extend the cargo space up to the front as needed. The passenger seat features manual sliding as well as recline, but lacks the height adjustment that you find on the driver's seat. Now the Fiat 500 isn't necessarily a big people hauler, especially for taller individuals, but for comparison's sake, I'm about 5 foot 11, and I probably have about an inch, inch and a half of headspace, which isn't too bad, and you can raise and lower these headrests back here for a little bit better comfort, but where it gets a little tight is leg room, so if you have taller people up front, it's, you can kind of see my the position of my legs now relative to this seat right here, and that's about a comfortable position for myself up front. So taller individuals may want to sit up front. You do have a little storage pocket back here, as well as some armrests, not to mention coat hooks up top and side curtain airbags. The back seat's also trimmed with red color accent stitching. Good size glove box, a little storage net, your auxiliary and USB inputs also located in there. The Fiat 500 is just a little bit different. It's not your typical type of car with its own unique identity and a touch of madness with the Abarth models. Designed to put a smile on your face, not only with its sound, but its quirks and fun nature. A great blend of style and function for a zippy urban runabout. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed this detailed look at the 2013 Fiat 500 Abarth Cabrio. Be sure to stay tuned next time. There's a lot more where that came from. Take care, everybody.